Hi, my name is Emmanuel Obodo. I'm a specialist biomedical scientist and I'm also a lecturer in biomedical science here in the United Kingdom. I completed my PhD in biomedical science. I have extensive experience working in an NHS hospital as a specialist biomedical scientist. I have used these experiences to help a number of people navigate through interview questions and therefore get their dream job as a biomedical scientist. I'm here to help you navigate interview questions, thereby increasing your chances of getting a job as a biomedical scientist. What I would ask is that you like, share, comment and subscribe to our page. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, so um, today we are going to look at something that you know, some people have been asking me questions about. So I thought of instead of answering the question um, individually and also in the past, I've been able to help people to do this. And I feel like, okay, you know what, let me do it and put it on a video out there. And that way it can help a number of people. So I've titled it, do this before you apply for a biomedical scientist position. It doesn't, I know that sometimes we are always in a hurry we want to submit the applications. We want to say, okay, we've applied this or that. We applied here or have applied here. But your application may not go forward if you've not done a great job. And the great job starts with your NHS profile, okay, or the track profile or bit better job profile. So you need to make sure that you've done that very well. So most times in shortlisting, we are going to pay attention on your experiences, your working experiences, what do you say you've done or what have you not done? And another place they will pay attention is on your supporting information. So let me go, in, go through them with you using example in hematology and transfusion sciences, okay? And also in biochemistry. But you can also apply this in all other departments like microbiology, immunology, histopathology, okay? Now let's look at it in detail. The first thing you need to know is that um, in, when you are doing this, okay, you know, I tell people, I say, think about this. You want someone to shortlist you for interview. You want your name to be put forward for an interview. You want to be shortlisted. What will make the system shortlist you? The system is not just going to shortlist you because you are HCPC registered. Yes, that is important. But the system wants to make sure that there are a few things that you know. One. Can you be easily trained? What does that mean? What I mean by can you be easily trained is that what have you done in the past? What you've done in the past, does it look like what the system is doing here? Okay, so you need to find a way to make your experiences, irrespective of where you work, to reflect what the system is doing here. So when you've done that carefully, okay then when the system look at your profile okay they can be able to say oh, okay that's fine even though this person have not worked in the united kingdom but this person has done this 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 and this is the kind of things we do here then you stand the chance of being shortlisted so i'm gonna show you example this is just example okay it's just to give you idea of the the way i help people in terms of building up their NHS profile. So this profile, of course, can be on tracks or better. It doesn't matter, okay? So first of all, the first thing is the general. So I'm going to want you to look at the information here. So general in the sense that it captured everything, okay? So you can see from here, I mentioned things like collecting, preparing, storing, and analyzing patient sample, okay? Using auto analyze that space, that's general, okay? Use, use auto analyzers, semi-auto analyzer and some manual processes so that's general so i also mentioned things like i follow standard operating procedure that is general i mentioned something like good laboratory practice that is also general okay now i also mentioned things like ensuring results of laboratory investigation are communicated okay you know and escalated where necessary okay that is also general okay now this is general this is a kind of trying to introduce what you can do. Remember that your profile should be an ID. You should be, by the time they go through your profile, you should be an ID candidate for that position. 
So it's an opportunity for you to sell yourself very well. Okay? So let's crack on with this. So I first of all start building with hematology. Okay? So in hematology, what you need to know that the practice is the same everywhere. But there can be little differences, okay? Like the way we practice here might be different in other countries. But technically or generally, basically, they are the same, okay? So if we measure hem we, we measure hemoglobin here. Hemoglobin is also measured somewhere, measured in every other country. We measure white blood cells. White blood cells is also measured in every other country. So it doesn't really matter. But what do matter is that we use different equipment. While in other countries, they do mainly manual, they do PCV centrifuge from there, work out their hemoglobin and all that, do total white cell count differently and also do differential. No, here analyzer does everything for us. So if you are building your profile, you should start naming those analyzers that is being used here. So when you name those analyzers, then the system will be like, okay, wow. Oh, this person have used this analyzer. Okay, that's fine. Oh, that means if we employ this person, we won't find it difficult training this person. That, that is all you are trying to do, okay? And interestingly, these analyzers, you can actually watch how they perform on YouTube, how they function rather on YouTube, okay? So there is no hindrances here. So for example, if you come to hematology, there are a number of analyzers they use. These are just few that I said to put, okay? So you have a Unicell DXH800. This is Beckman Cutter, okay? It's for full block count, okay? Of course, there's a different kind of Beckman cutter in other um, like biochemistry and all that. But anyway, DXH800 is for food block count. And this, you know, is like a line, okay? So when a sample passes from the analyzer, if it is the one that requires for film, the line also have analyzer that can make a film. So anyway, it's a DXH800, okay? Then it also have a oh, Unicell DXH slide maker stainer, okay? So these are the kind of things you need to put there. Say, I have used this. Another one that is also very common here, okay, is in terms of X, Sysmex XL line. So this Sysmex XL line, synonymous with that of the uh, Beckman cut as well, is a line. So when a sample pass from it, the analyzers, okay, it can move from there to SP10. The SP10 is the one that do the staining, sorry, that do this film making, and also do this turning okay then after that if everything is completed it can go to ds2000 okay so this ds2000 is basically tube sorter okay the tube sorter will kind of sort the tube okay is it completed is there anything still outstanding or is it unknown or something like that it will sort it anyway from there it can also move the one that require esr can now go on the one we call interliner so anyway these are the common um Analyzer that is being used when it comes to hematology. There's a lot of them, like even ABX, okay, is also used. So there's a number of analyzers that can be used, but this is just example. But what does that mean? When you write your profile, you need to put any of these analyzers there. If they don't say it, it decays that you don't know that you've not used the analyzers. Therefore, it will be difficult to train you. You see? So that's why you need to do that, okay? Now, remember I'm putting this in headings. So I've looked at the genera. The next one is hematology. Now let's look at another heading, which is coagulation. This sort thing needs to be together. So when you write your profile and say, I have this experience, you need to now put it in sessions of what you've done on each. Like if you say you have worked in a multidisciplinary laboratory, so you need to put, it doesn't have to just be hematology, you can put biochemistry, you can put microbiology, you can put immunology, histopathy, whichever thing, just say, this is what I've done, this is what I've done, this equipment that I've used, very important. So this is just an example. So in terms of coagulation here, one of the common um, analyzers they use, I chose just two, I think so, yeah, two. So TOPS 550, 550, okay? Another one that is being used is 6 mes C5, 2000 2100i. Okay, so these analyzers they are used for coagulation profile, special testing, you know, all kinds of coagulation tests. Okay, that is very, very important that you put it there. Say, I've used this analyzer, very important. Another thing you can see in terms of coagulation is gene expert for, hem for hemoglobin variants and factor V lagging. Okay, so they are also very important that you put them there and say. 
that is very important. So when it comes to coagulation, even if you don't put the gene expert for hemoglobin variants and factor, v, factor 5 Leiden, you need to make sure you put at least top 500 and tops 550 or 6 mex C52100i. That is very, very important that you put it. The system would like to see that you've used it. Okay? Now, let's look at the next one. In blood bank, there's a number of analyzers that we also use in blood bank. Okay? So you have what we call gestation plus. Okay, this gestation plus is no longer common, but even if you mention it, that is still okay because they all work with the same principle. You see, another one that is being used is IH1000, that is from BioRad. Okay, so again, that is also one of the common ones, but the most common one that is being used is AutoVision. So these analyzers they help to do blood group and antibody screening, they can even help to do antibody panel. Okay, to some extent, I think some of them can be programmed to do cross matching as well. Anyway, so these are the things that they want to see. So any of this should be on your profile if you are writing about blood bank. Okay, now here, unlike in other countries, we don't do tie grouping. You know, you put anti serra, you put the sample. No, we don't do it. So there's no need of putting that. The system here is not doing it, so don't put it. They don't need it. But you need to know that what we do here is card grouping. Or tube grouping, but the common one is card grouping, both card grouping and card antibody screening, even antibody panel, because we use IgG card for them. So you need to put that, put down that yes, this is you have used this analyzer, and also you've done card grouping, you've done antibody panel, you know, you've done issuing of blood and medicinal product, you've done cross matching, that you've used obos. I think I didn't put obos here. Obos is where we order blood. That you've used obos, okay, that you've ordered O blood obos through NHS BT. Something like that. So you need to put these details and say this is what you've done. Okay? So you can even say you've done things like um reagent verification, that you verified maybe the reagent used in the blood bank, like uh, something like uh, antibody screening cells, or maybe something like antibody panel cells. As you can, so many other things that you've done reagent verification for it. Okay? There are so many things that you can put in place. Okay? Like things like even when it comes to reagent verification, we have what we call end of badge verification. So when that reagent is about to finish, or maybe when the reagent is about to expire, you verify the end of the badge. The reagent was working from the beginning up to the point that you stop using it. That is end of badge verification. So you can put all this in detail. That is what the game, the system wants to see. Now, let's look at other things like biochemistry. So biochemistry, there's a number of analyzers like I've listed here that you can use, okay? You know, you have uh, uh, Beckman Cotter, you have Abbott Architect, okay, you have Roach Cobas, so many of them. So make sure if you are filling in your profile, if you have not started working in the UK, find out from people who are working in the UK which analyzer that is being used. So from this video, you can look up some of these analyzers and find out the ones that you can include, okay? They all work with the same principle, okay? It's very, very important that you put them and say, I have used this to do this, okay? Very vital, okay? Now, let's look at um, in terms of validation. So after you've used the analyzer to analyze your result and all that, you need to validate that result or authorize the result, okay? So when you hear validation, or you hear authorization, sometimes some people use the word release the result. It means that as a biomedical scientist, you have looked at that result and you are okay with everything. So once that happened then, you can now use any of this laboratory management information system to do it. So each laboratory or each hospital use different limbs, okay? So some people use telepath, some people use lab center, some people use Meditech, some people use Sena. There are so many of them. So what do you do when you are writing your own profile? If you have if you have worked, let's say, in three different places, you can choose to use any of this. So you can say maybe in your first place, you can say you have used Sena. Maybe in the second place, you say you use Meditech. Maybe in the third place, you say you've used Lab Center. When they look at your profile, they'll say, oh, this person have used Lab Center. This person have used Meditech. This person, have, oh, that means this person has idea. Okay? So, but that is for second validation. In hematology, there's depending on the hospital, we have what we call first validation and second validation. For example, when you use Beckman Cotter, which is DX, 
DXH800. There's a software, there are software which is called Remisor. So Remisor, when the result pass, some of them will be trapped on the Remisor. So when you look at the result from the Remisor, if you are happy with it and you release that result, then it can be trapped on other lengths, maybe like telepath or lab center, as the case may be. Then you can do the second validation there. So Remisor or maybe uh, Excel line, Excel line also has software known as EPU. So this EPU also function like Remisor from the Beckman cutter. So when the result is done on the analyzer, they can be trapped on this other Remisor, Beckman cutter, or EPU, which is Excel line. Then you validate the result from there. Then you can now choose to go to the second validation using limbs. It's not all the hospitals that do this, okay? But if you do it, then you can now go to the second validation line, which is either using telepath or lab center to validate the result finally. So if you're writing your profile, it will be nice to mention this first validation. It will be nice to mention first validation and second validation. The system will understand that you know what you are saying, okay? Now, finally, this is for the supporting information, okay? So I want, I, I'm going to leave this for a very long time here for you to kind of look at what have I done here? What I have done here was to sell myself to tell the system, come on, I'm the right guy. Take me, pick me. Because by the time you read this, you will know I am the right person. Okay? I've mentioned that I'm hardworking. I mentioned all the analyzers that I've used. I mentioned what I've used them for. I mentioned a lot of things here. How I'm multitasking, how I've worked as a good team. So many other things. I mentioned them here. That way, you know, I am the right guy. And these things that I've just mentioned, they are the things that will increase your chances of being shortlisted. So please, don't be in a hurry to make application rather take your time to build your profile very well build your nhs profile very well or, or tracks very well or better very well build it very well in such a way that when they look at it they'll say this is our the id man this is our id woman and they cannot give you the opportunity by shortlisting you can i also say this Sometimes when you are making an application, they usually ask you some questions. For an example, they can say, maybe you are making an application, they say, oh, tell us which mistake have you made before? And what did you do about, what did you learn from it? Something like that. If you don't know the answer, don't just put answers, ask questions. Ask a senior colleague questions. Like on this YouTube, you can actually ask me, say, please, I've gotten this question, what do you think about it? I'll reply you. So, Make sure that everything you are doing, you are doing them right. It's not about the application. It's about them looking at your profile and being happy with your answers and the way you've done your thing. That is what I will give you the opportunity to be shortlisted. Anyway, for interview. Once again, thank you guys very much for listening. This channel is made for the purpose of helping you, not just to go for interview, okay? but to make your shoulders to be hard when you finish your interview. That is my aim, and that is what I'm doing on this channel. And I'm sure that anyone that follows this channel, you will be enjoying. Even when you get a job, this, channels, this channel is very important for you to stay close to it. Thank, thank you very much till I come back away again. Once again, my name is Dr. Mario Lobolo.